violence has uh, flared up between uh, Hezbollah and Israel, and uh, it's believed to have uh, wider uh, connotations and implications uh, in the region, particularly with Iran in the picture. Well, we're now joined by Professor Saeed Marandi, who's uh, an academic and political analyst from the University of Tehran. He joins us now via Zoom. Thanks very much indeed for joining us and welcome to the program. Thank you very much for having me. What do you think is behind the latest flare-up between Israel and uh, Hezbollah? I think the Israeli regime is trying to intimidate the people of Lebanon and of course uh, Hezbollah. A couple of two days ago, there were three rockets that were fired towards Israel, towards occupied Palestine, and one of them actually landed inside Lebanon itself. And it's probably it was probably Palestinians who launched these rockets. And then yesterday, the Israeli regime began to shell uh, different areas across southern Lebanon, and then they bombed southern Lebanon. So it was completely disproportionate, and the uh, the three projectiles, which, as I said, one of them landed in Lebanon, it didn't even get go into uh, Israeli territory. Um, though those three rockets, the two that landed in inside Israeli territory, didn't do any real damage. So the Israeli regime carried out a huge disproportionate uh, attack across southern Lebanon. Uh, terrorizing the local population. And so today, uh, Hezbollah, uh, based, since the Israelis violated Lebanon and Lebanese uh, territory, uh, they retaliated uh, because they had promised before that every time the Israelis carry out strikes, they'll strike back. So the Israelis, since they hit empty territory, um, the Hezbollah also hit empty territory inside uh, Israel. So that's basically uh, what happened. Hezbollah wanted to show the Israelis that they can't uh, escalate without um, receiving a response. And it seems like the Israeli regime was trying to see if it could bomb inside Lebanon uh, without getting a response so that in future they could continue to do this and, and keep the local population uh, living in fear. Is this a territorial dispute between Israel and Lebanon, especially when we start talking about uh, the Sheba Farms region? Yes, the Sheba Farm region is Lebanese territory. Uh, the Syrians acknowledge that it is Lebanese territory. Uh, and of course, the Golan Heights are all Syrian alongside this area, but they are occupied uh, by the Israeli regime. It is Lebanon, it is Syrian territory, but these, uh, this particular area that you named, it is a part of Lebanon. It's the only part of Lebanon that is still occupied by the Israeli regime. So uh, Iran, a great supporter of Hezbollah, do you think that that is a complication in this conflict between Israel and Lebanon? Well, Iran obviously supports the Lebanese people. It supports the, the resistance in Lebanon. The resistance in Lebanon is supported by the Lebanese government and by the majority of the uh, parliamentarians. Uh, Hezbollah fired into uh, Lebanese territory, occupied Lebanese territory, whereas the Israelis uh, in, they bombed Lebanon, they violated uh, Lebanese uh, sovereignty, and, the, and Hezbollah retaliated. So Iran has always been so supportive of the resistance, whether in Lebanon or in Palestine, but uh, the events over the last couple of days are, are, are clearly uh, indicating that the Israelis were the side that escalated, as, as, is, as is usually the case. Yeah, Iran has always been opposed, of course, to the apartheid regime in, regime in Palestine. Before the revolution in Iran, 42 years ago, Iran had very good relations with both the apartheid regime in South Africa and the apartheid regime in Palestine. After the revolution, Iran immediately broke off ties with both these regimes. 
and supported the resistance, whether in South Africa or in Palestine. And of course, after the uh, collapse of the apartheid regime in South Africa, Iran established normal ties with uh, the South African government. But Iran's policy towards Palestine continues to be what it has been over the last 42 years. Where does this conflict go from here? Do you think that, um, that both sides will step back now? Well, Hezbollah has never initiated conflict on the border. Hezbollah has only responded to the Israelis because Hezbollah believes that if they allow the Israeli regime to bomb Lebanon without uh, receiving response, that they will continue to escalate. And it's not only the bombing of Lebanon or the shelling of Lebanon. The Israeli Air Force, on a daily basis, flies over Lebanon. And the United States and the Europeans, NATO countries, prevent Lebanon from purchasing surface-to-air missiles to protect their airspace. So Lebanese airspace is open airspace for Israel. And this is one of the extraordinary things uh, about our region, that the Europeans and the Americans prevent Lebanon from blocking Israeli Air Force jets from flying over. And what the Israeli regime usually does is that they fly their, 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 their uh, planes fly over Lebanon and then they strike inside Syria. And also what they do is they often hide behind uh, commercial airlines so that the Syrian uh, defense uh, systems would either refrain from firing surface-to-air missiles or they would be putting uh, ordinary civilian airliners at risk. And a, a couple of years back, three, four years back, uh, a Russian aircraft was downed by Syrian missiles during a, a, an Israeli airstrike that, as I said, used Lebanese airspace. All right, so we've been talking about Lebanon and Israel, but um, Iran has its own tensions with Israel over time, and uh, I think you started describing that. Uh, but tell us what happened in this in the Gulf and this tanker that Israel is saying was uh, fired upon by Iran. Well, over the last couple of years, we've seen the Israeli regime strike 12 Iranian tankers. Those tankers were um, tankers that were going to Syria uh, because the Europeans, the Americans, and others are trying to starve Syria of oil to bring Syria to its knees, like what they do in Cuba, like what they do in Venezuela, and like in Iran, where they have maximum the maximum pressure sanctions. They target ordinary people to get their way. So the Iranians have been sending oil to Syria so that ordinary people could, could you know, work live their lives with fuel. And 12 Iranian tankers were struck. And never did the Europeans or the Americans express outrage or uh, express concern about uh, the attack on civilian tankers in international waters because they support the Israeli regime. Recently, we've seen uh, Israeli tankers being struck. I think five Israeli tankers have been struck. In. Uh, although Iran has never claimed responsibility and it's not clear where the drones or the missiles come from, it could come from Yemen, but uh, it has been a deterrence to the Israeli regime. And I think that that deterrence is what uh, outrages Western governments, because if, it's, if they are worried about shipping, then they should have been worried about all the Iranian tankers that were hit over the last couple of years. But there was another incident, uh, incident a couple of days ago, which the Iranians believe was a false flag operation. And that was a so-called hijacking of a tanker near uh, the UAE, the United Arab Emirates. So there were reports coming from Western media and from shipping sources that a tanker uh, had been hijacked and it was moving towards Iran. And they were saying that these were that the Iranians had taken the tanker or hijack the tanker, uh, but and then a few, a few hours later, the, so the, the 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 militants or the the soldiers or the armed men who boarded the ship they they left, 
which for Iran proved is evidence that this was either carried out by Western military forces, U.S. forces, special forces, or forces allied with the West. Because within minutes after the ship was boarded, you would have drawn, because the Persian Gulf region is full of military bases and uh, Western, there's a large Western presence. Within minutes, you would have drones flying overhead, ships moving towards the tanker, airplanes flying overhead. And there's no way that those hijackers could get away after being on the ship for a few hours without being detected. And the fact that we we have no clue as to who's, as uh, with regards to the identity of these hijackers, makes it clear that this was actually carried out by Western governments and, or the, and their regional allies. And uh, we will probably never know who, who boarded this ship. But maybe 45 years from now. To what end do you think, though? I think that the United States and its allies want to put pressure on Iran. Remember, the new president has uh, just uh, begun his presidency. It was, it was right at the time when uh, he was about to be inaugurated. And uh, the United States wants to ratchet up tensions with Iran to put pressure on Iran. Uh, we know that ever since Biden became president, he's been pursuing the exact same policies as Trump, there's been no difference. And uh, not only with Iran, with Syria, with Yemen, uh, the support that the Americans give to the Saudis to carry out genocide in Yemen, in Venezuela, in Cuba, uh, the policies haven't changed. And the same is true with regards to Iran. Of course, the Americans are in a sort of paradoxical position because on the one hand, they want to uh, engage uh, in a negative way with China. They want to compete with China. They want to put pressure on China. And therefore, they want to withdraw from our region to put more focus on that country. But on the other hand, they want to maintain pressure on Iran. So it's sort of like wanting to have their cake and eat it too. But we will have to see how things play out. All right. And that will be the topic of a conversation another day.